All right, today we're gonna to install the Electro Cycle Garage uh, Extended Swing Arm Kit. Um, so this is the seven to eight inch. So this is their longest kit. Um, we're gonna install on a uh, MX 500. And uh, so the first step is gonna to be to remove the chain guard. So you're gonna undo uh, your stock chain guard. There's two Phillips screws, um, one at the back, one at the front to pull off the chain guard. So you'll pull that off. So that's gonna be the first step. Um, the next step is, uh, I mean, you don't have to go in any particular order, but we're gonna to have to undo um, the caliper and we're gonna to have to undo uh, the axle. So uh, we'll do that. Um, I'm probably just gonna take off uh, the caliper first um, just to get it out of the way. It really doesn't matter. So you're gonna use a five millimeter Allen to take off the stock brake or aftermarket brake. So I have a five millimeter Allen here. So we'll do that. And you're gonna save that screw. You'll need to reuse it. And we'll undo this one. So again, that's two five millimeter Allen screws. And then obviously your brake will just come off and you can set that to the side. Um, the next step, like I said, is gonna be removing the axle and those are 19 millimeters. So you'll need two 19 millimeter uh, wrenches or a 19 and a 19 socket. So we'll undo these. I got a wrench on one side and the ratchet on the other. And uh, the, obviously the wheel is gonna wanna fall when you do this, so you really need to support the wheel or have some help. Right now it's hanging, um, so I'm gonna grab it before it Right falls. here, I've just dropped it down. It's still hanging on the chain, so I'm gonna have to push this tensioner down and then get it off of either uh, the motor or uh, the rear sprocket. So I'm working on the rear sprocket right now. Um, it's hard to do with uh, one hand, but there you go. So the chain's off of the wheel and so the wheel can be set to the side. So I now have the wheel off, like I said. So now it's getting the chain off of this tensioner. Um, I got it all knotted up, there we go. So you'll undo this nut to get the chain off the tensioner. It's a 10 millimeter. So you'll just loosen this 10 millimeter. So once that's loose, you can pull that nut off. Once the nut's off, set that to the side. Don't lose it, you need it. And then you'll slide off this uh, set of bearings and the chain and everything. You just don't need the chain. So you'll disregard the chain, throw it to the side and keep your bearings and the other part of the tensioner, whatever the heck it's called. Um, so you'll set those to the side. We'll need to reuse those. So now we got uh, the chain off, we got the wheel off, and really we're ready to go ahead and set uh, the swing arm extensions on there. Um, so I'm gonna grab those after I wipe my hands off because I'm now greasy from nasty chain. So I'm gonna try to wipe off this grease real quick. And I'm gonna grab the right hand side first and should just slip right on here. Um, this piece right here is gonna go right where the old axle was, um, just like so. And it's sitting right on there perfect. So it should just stay, and then you'll grab the hardware that it came with. So these long Allens, and then You'll grab a couple nuts and you have to get some washers. So I don't, I don't remember what size washers these are, but uh, it's not hard, you'll figure it out. So you're gonna grab uh, the bolt and you're gonna go through the stock axle uh, right here. And then you're gonna put a washer on and then you're gonna put your nut on and you can just do it snug. 
so that'll hold it in place uh, for when you get ready to drill out the other hole. So we're gonna put that side on. Now I'm gonna grab the other side real quick and do the same thing. So I got the other side here and you're gonna do the same thing. It should just slide right on. Hopefully you don't have too much uh, paint or powder coat on there. If you do, you might have to do some sanding. You'll do the same thing, put in that bolt, get your washer, put your washer there and put this nut on and snug it up just by hand. So now we got both extensions uh, on there, uh, just temporary. Uh, so now we'll get ready to drill the holes. So now we need to drill out this hole here. Uh, you'll wanna use a punch. Uh, that way you can have something for your drill bit to start in. So you'll want to uh, get your eyes calibrated. Um, that way you know exactly where the center in, uh, the center is, I'm sorry. So you wanna make your punch mark right in the center here. If you put it off to the side, you're gonna screw up. So it is important to have your eyes calibrated or get you something to measure with. So luckily I had mine calibrated recently. Uh, so they're still in uh, date. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the center there calibration. And then I'm going to use my punch to punch a couple times, and that is dead center right on. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to progressively drill that out from small to big. And the first drill bit I'm going to use is a 1 8 inch. So I'm going to get a 1 8 inch drill bit, load that into the drill. And uh, then we're gonna drill that. So we're gonna put it right on our punch mark and drill away. Okay, so we're through the first side. So now you gotta get through the other side. But what's important is that you make sure that you're still going straight, right? You don't wanna cock the drill like so because it ain't gonna be a straight hole. So you need to make sure that it's level going in to drill through the other side. So once you're sure that it's level and straight and all that, then you can go ahead and start drilling the other side. And so now we're through the other side. So that's with the, that's with the eighth inch uh, bit. And then from there, I'm gonna go to a uh, 1364. Um, it doesn't matter, but what you go to, but in this case, I just like to progressively get bigger. It just makes it easier to drill it than rather than sticking a big old bit there. So I got a 1364 um, here that I'm gonna drill with. And so I'm gonna put it straight on that hole and drill away. and you can see I already punched through. It's gonna punch through quick now. So you wanna make sure that you're still hitting that other hole. So you wanna make sure that you're in it and then drill through the backside. So you can always look back here um, and make sure that you can see your drill bit. Um, like so, sorry, the camera went upside down. Uh, I did. It's over here. Yep. So you wanna make sure that you can see the drill bit like so, and I'm gonna go ahead and drill and he can watch from there. And we punch through now. And now I'm gonna go up to a quarter inch. So this is a quarter inch bit, one quarter. So we're gonna drill one quarter then. And through there. And you wanna make sure that you're on that hole over here make sure your bits poking through like mine should be and then you'll punch right through that that's one quarter and now we're gonna go to the final size um, which 
I say differs from what uh, ElectroCycle uh, says, but I'm using a 3 8 So this is a 3 8 inch bit and it's uh, a perfect size rather than I think he calls for a 12 millimeter. 12 millimeter. Um, if you measure this out, I don't know where, about... I don't know where my calipers are, but anyways, uh, so 3 8 is a good size. It's rather than trying to go find a specialty bit, that's what I had and it, it works. So this is, like I said, uh, again, a 3 8 I'm gonna drill out the 3 8 here. So. And I have my drill on a torque setting so it doesn't rip my arm off, but I'm gonna take that off real quick. And I'm through the first side. So now I'm gonna make sure I'm lined up over there. And I need to switch my body position anyway so this drill doesn't kill me. Um, I need to get ready to really drill, so. So now we've punched through both sides with our final bit, which was a 3 8 I'm gonna clean this metal shavings up from the hole right there. And then we can take our hardware that was provided with the kit, which is uh, this bolt and the washers that were not provided, but I got some here handy. So we're gonna stick in our bolt, it should go right in, and it should pop out the other side just like it does. Take our washer, we'll put our washer on, and then our nut, and then we'll snug that up. So now, uh, it's just hand tight, both sides, but uh, now you can go ahead and tighten them up. So to tighten this up, the Allen is a 730 seconds. It is standard, so a 730 seconds is the Allen side. And then the wrench side for the nut is a 9 16 So you'll take a 9 16 go on here, and with your Allen, and I'm going the wrong direction. So, and then you can just snug up the nut side. And then we'll do the same thing with this one here. And then I'm gonna snug up the nut side by hand. Get that tight like it is. And that's it for this side. So if you see, it comes out really flush. Um, it's perfectly drilled, easy, nothing difficult. Um, so now we'll do the other side. We're just gonna go over there. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna start with a eighth inch bit. We're gonna go to a 1364, then to a quarter, then to a three eighths. We're gonna take our punch again, find the exact center. Again, this is very important. Uh, you don't wanna get off centered because uh, I don't, I, I'm sure it's gonna be a nightmare if you do. So I'm um, dead center right here, I can tell. Again, my eyes were just recently calibrated. We're gonna punch here a couple times. Make a good mark and we'll grab our drill. We'll switch to our 1.8. So I'm going to try a different one, a different 1.8. I have a couple of them. I'm going to see if this one's maybe a little bit newer. Oh, it's bent. We ain't using that one. That one's a trash one. We're going to go back to this 1.8. 1 1.8 1 right here. Here we go. Okay, we just punched through. So we're gonna hit the other side now. 
And we're gonna do the same thing, make sure we're level and straight, just like we are. done next 1364 1364 done just stay over here next one quarter Don't do that. One quarter. Last but not least, three eight. through clean up the shavings that are here we had a sticker on the swing arm so some of that's that we'll grab the hardware grab my washer that I had Stick our bolt through, and then our washer, which is stainless. And then we hand tight that. Both of them are hand tight. Now we're gonna get our tools again. Uh, we're gonna do the 730 seconds here, and then the 9 sixteenths, like I said. So we've got 9 sixteenths on the back side on the nut. snug that up and then same thing here snug that up and that's done so now it's officially on so we have a big boy extension on there now so now the next steps are to put it all back together and make a new chain and all that good stuff so uh, here I'm going to get the wheel and I'm going to get the hardware. Uh, so these are the chain or the tensioners. Um, so I'm just going to set the wheel there. I got the two tensioners. I got to get the nuts and the washers that it comes with. Nuts, washer. So I got all the hardware here. So you're going to take these. And you're going to feed it into the hole like so. Not very difficult. You'll take a, a washer. Stick the washer on there. Take your nut. Stick your nut on there. And you don't need to tighten it or anything. Just put it on there loose. And then do the same thing on this other side. Stick it in there. Get your washer and your nut, all that. Just put it on there loose. And then find your axle, a uh, really nice axle. These are sweet. Uh, you got two nuts and your axle. And then you're gonna obviously remove this stock one. Um, so I'm gonna undo all this. Take note of where you had your washers and all that good stuff on here and your spacers uh, your wheel spacers because you'll more than likely use the same spacing you had before so i'm just going to pull that out 
and I had on this side, I had on the left side, I had a washer and then the spacer. And on this side, I really had the same thing because I might've had two, I don't remember. So I had two, but I think one, yeah, one was on the outside. Uh, so it was one on the inside, one on the outside. And so we're actually not gonna need that. Then you will take your axle, you'll stick it through. You'll stick it through. And once you get it through a little bit, you'll take your uh, spacer and your washer and you'll set those. I'm actually gonna set this exactly how uh, my bike is, which is a, a washer and a spacer. So you'll lift up your wheel and then feed that in just like so until it pokes out the other side so right here it's kind of hard to see but it's poked through uh through the wheel so just barely so then we're going to take the same combo which um is i think actually over there let me look real quick at what is on my bike um because i'm going to do the same thing real quick and see what's on there. It's actually no washer on that side, sorry. It's just the spacer. And uh, so we're gonna pull the axle back out some so I can slide this spacer up in there. So just the spacer. So we'll have to pull the axle back out. There we go. And that's going through now. And then you'll want to line this all up. It's coming through just like so. So you'll want to make sure that you're in, in that uh, tensioner piece there. And then you're going to take your nuts and put one nut here. and just get it started where the threads are basically coming through the nut. And then you'll do the same thing on the other side where they're coming through. And then uh, I push the wheel all the way forward. So that's how I want it. That's the smallest uh, extension because now it slides, right? So you can adjust it how you need to. So this is eight inch, this is seven inch. So I'm putting mine all the way to the front and um, so we're gonna get this tightened up some. So I'm moving both of them at the same time. Um, that way I, I'm getting the even amount of threads coming through both sides. So this is uh, an 18. These nuts are 18s. So you can take two sockets, two 18 millimeter sockets, and you'll just push forward uh, with your body so I'm using my body to push against the wheel and then you can just tighten these by hand. So just pretty much as tight as you can with your hand turning the sockets. So you don't need to use a ratchet right now. So I just want the wheel all the way forward um, in the slider and I want them tightened. So that way this can spin freely how it needs to. So, cause now we're gonna measure for the chain. Um, so I'm not an expert with the chains and you know the easiest way for me to do it is just take some chain that you got um this is a stock one or stock size that came off of a bike this is a, another stock one that came off of a bike which is all twisted up so i'm sorry i wish should do this later but there we go so i got that untwisted and then i got some spare chain back here so i don't know if it's long enough i don't think it is but we'll see so this is a piece that i already broke off so i can pretty much tell you it's there's no way yeah there's there, if you put that together there's no way that's long enough so i'm gonna have to start with a new bag this is probably about size for a stock piece. So I got a brand new bag of a 10 foot here. 
and another brand new master link. We'll need that. So open up your bag of chain. This is a 10 footer. We'll find the end. Come over here with the camera. And then I'm gonna feed this up and I'm just gonna put it on the shaft of the motor. That way I can spin it. And then I'm gonna take the chain at the bottom and I'm gonna connect it to the sprocket. And basically from there, I'm gonna pull out all the tension and see where I need to break it. So it needs to be broke right about here. So I'm gonna mark this. Remember where I'm at there. So I'm in front of my thumb, so I'm gonna break that. So you get your chain breaker. Uh, this is an Amazon special, um, does the job. I can post a link, but uh, we're gonna take the chain, grab it. Sorry, it's hard because I'm working with 10 foot of chain. So grab it with the chain breaker and make sure you're pushing the pin. So I'm starting to push out the pin. Came off centered a little bit. There we go. So it's gonna push the pin out the back side over here. And I don't wanna to go too much because I don't wanna, I just wanna work it evenly because you gotta press out two pins. So now we're gonna to go to the second pin and press it out. So let me start to press out the second pin. There we go. So it's now all pressed out. You can take your chain breaker off. <clears throat> and I just usually wiggle these side to side to get it to separate. Sometimes they're harder than others. coming but slowly well, I, got, I got it broke this is the piece that i need and so now we're going to check to make sure that i cut the right length honestly i think i have one length too many so which i would rather break it twice than be too short so we're going to do the same thing um, we're going to take this over the shaft or honestly I, I don't think i did it right last time but uh we'll see here Might actually be right on the money or yeah so um, we're actually so we're uh, right about where we need to be with the chain tensioners in the way so just give me a second here now we got the chain on the motor and we got it on the back sprocket and we have the chain tensioner under the bottom piece right i've also slid the master link onto here so right here is where the master link is and i haven't uh linked it actually together yet it's it's put together but i don't have the lock on yet so i'm, I'm gonna be ready to put the lock if you see uh this chain i don't have the bearings and all that stuff on the tensioner yet so this tensioner is actually gonna be down a little bit more. Um, and you can see the chains are real close to touching, but I'll adjust the tension from back here then, because if I pull out another link, it's not gonna fit. There's no way that I'm gonna get an extra link out of this. I might, but it's it's not worth trying to take out a link and then it, it not working. So I'd rather just 
play it safe and adjust the tension from the axle. Uh, that's the nice part about this kit. So I got my lock for my master link here. Right. And put the master link on, I got the lock on. It's all good there. You can rotate this, make sure that it's not locking up or anything. The wheel's spinning fine. Again, I don't have my bearings or any of that stuff here yet. So uh, once I'm sure that the chain's spinning freely and the master link's on there right, then I can uh, install the bearings, which I'm gonna now do right gonna now. You're gonna take this piece, uh, the U-shaped piece, and it's gonna sit in this orientation and you're gonna have to get it over the chain like so. Um, so the chain's like that, I'm pushing down on the tensioner and, and I'm gonna get the bearings in there. Uh, it's kind of hard to do all with one hand. And then I'm gonna slide all this onto the tensioner just like so. So now that's like that and I can take the nut 10 millimeter nut slide that back on there and then I'm going to get my wrench 10 millimeter wrench and I'm going to tighten this up doesn't have to be super tight um, but that's like that and you can see this is hitting the tensioner the top chain is hitting the tensioner so like I said there's there's too much slack in this so we'll get the slack out uh, with the adjusters back here at the back um, so we'll take our 18s and we'll put our 18s on the on the axle we can loosen those up slightly and then we can adjust these nuts here at the back to pull out some of this slack these are 11 millimeters so sorry i'm still not sure sorry my watch wanted to talk to us so we'll tighten this up a little bit on both sides and you want to do it evenly, of course, so you can count your numbers of, of turns or whatever you want to do. I'm going to count the threads at the back side um, after I get this tightened up a little bit. So you can already see that my chain is now, uh, this isn't hitting there. So I've already gotten out a good bit of slack. Um, the chains do stretch over time, so I might wanna take a little bit more out. And like I said, now I'm gonna count my threads here. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and start of the next one so this one's one two three four five six seven and the start of the next one so actually i'm even right now um so what we can do is we'll tighten down this axle again just by hand so we're gonna turn those sockets as much as we can by hand um we'll spin the wheel some See if it looks true, the chain looks true. If you come over here with the camera, you wanna make sure the chain's not hitting the plastic guard there, like it's off centered or anything. And so we've done that. We're gonna check our thread count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we're starting the next one. This one's one, two, three, oops, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, starting the next one. So we should be even. So now we can actually tighten that down uh, for real. So you don't need to get too crazy on it. Um, but I'm gonna get my wrenches on here. And then we're gonna tighten this up. 
and I'm doing both wrenches at the same time to make sure that I'm staying pretty even and I'm actually probably a hair too tight so I'm gonna loosen this a little bit you want to make sure that your wheels spinning and you're not locking up your bearings uh, if you tighten this down too much it will it will uh, lock up the bearings so your wheel should spin freely and you shouldn't have it super duper torqued down we'll count our threads again just to make sure nothing's moved so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Start of the next one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Start of the next one. So we should still be even there. And all our uh, axle nuts should be tight. Like I said you can spin it. Make sure that the wheel spins freely. Spin the chain. Make sure the chain spins good. Always make sure that you got your tensioner on the bottom part of the chain, not the top part. Like you always see all these people that don't know what the heck they're doing. They put this on top of the top chain and, and then they're pushing up here, which is not how a chain tensioner works. The tensioner goes on the bottom piece and it should be pushing up here, which is pulling, come on to the other side with the camera. It's pulling the chain around the sprocket the most if you're lifting up on this it's pulling it away from the teeth should be pulling it to the teeth like you, you see there so you always want the tensioner on the bottom just like you see it there so now our wheel spins good our chain spins good everything's good we're ready to put our brake on because we're pretty much done this thing will actually ride and drive right here no problem now uh, but if you want a rear brake, you're going to have to mount your brake again. And, of course, we want a rear brake. So you should have a bunch of slack if you got zoom brakes. Um, mine's all tied up here somewhere. I need to figure it all out um, where all my slack is. So I'm going to pull on this to get me some slack and to get this to the rear over here. So... I gotta see where all my slack is. So now you're gonna wanna slide your caliper on here if you got your slack. Um, so we'll get this bolt started here just a little bit and then we'll slide uh, the rotor over the brake pads and get this one started here on the bottom, just like so. And then you probably want to slide it all the way forward. So this is adjustable, this bracket, so you can slide it back or forward depending on where your axle nut is. So uh, for me, it's slide it all the way forward. Um, so I'm gonna tighten these down. Tighten those down and then we'll make sure that we're spinning freely um we do have a little bit of scrub which we can adjust up here um so we're gonna loosen these and this one and then we'll center this up a little bit better center this up a little bit better like so and then we can tighten these down and then we're a whole lot better there on rotor scrub so just make sure those are tight make sure these are tight and they are like I said, the wheel's spinning nice and free. We don't have any rotor scrub. Got the, the bolt's tight there. Make sure, like I said, that you still don't have any rotor scrub. We got the rotor scrub out. And then you can check to make sure your brake works. So go ahead and make sure the brake works. So hold the brake and then 
you, it works. So he's not squeezing it super hard, but it works. So the brake works good now. Let go. Like I said, the chain's working good. Everything's good. So now you have your slack here. You can use this bracket if you don't cut it off. You can use it uh, to zip tie to. Um, that way you have a mount to keep the brake line away from the tire. So I have that there, just like so. Cut, cut this off, flush, just like so. We have our other mounting point up here at the factory mount point. Got a zip tie there. So that's pretty much it. Um, that is the extent everything's installed or installed with the exception of the chain guard, which we can do right now. over there by my tire. All right, so we ended up getting the chain guard installed the rest of the way. Sorry, we had to take a break so I could clean my garage. Um, and so the stock chain guard does work. Obviously it doesn't come all the way and cover the whole thing because we're extended now, but it does cover up a good bit still. And this is what it looks like. This is, uh, this bike is, like I said, an MX500. It has a stock rear shock and it has the ENC uh, front fork kit um, and front tire, all that. It's the whole ENC for, uh, Electron Company front kit, um, but just Supermoto. So I pulled off the knobby tire it came with and put a Supermoto on there. Um, so that's how it looks. Sorry, I can't take it outside. It's dark right now, so there's no point in here. It's it's bright, so, um, but this is what it looks like. Um, we actually have two kits, um, so, and this is the second kit. It's the same thing. I can't get far enough back to show this, um, but it's the same thing, an MX500, and um, it's the, the same setup. So it's just, uh, this bike is the opposite of the other bike. So this one's a black frame, green swing arm. The other one's a uh, black swing arm, green frame. Uh, this is a 72 bike, uh, 72 volt bike and the other one's a 60 volt bike. Um, this has the new uh, EC4P uh, motor on it. This one's a Fever six, or 48 volt, actually over volted at 60. Um, so, but I think it comes out good. Um, you can see the logo there. Sorry, it's a little dirty um, just from working. Obviously we painted them. They just come raw aluminum finish. Um, we just got these today. We kind of rushed to do this. So we've kind of already scratched them up and all that. Um, but that one's black. This one's green. Um, same deal see the logo see the brake all that the green doesn't quite match the same just because uh, it was raw aluminum versus steel and the base coat was slightly different so the color is a little off but it's okay these aren't show bikes I mean they do look good but they're not perfect um, that one has a a uh, tall seat from a CRF 50. Actually, it's a razor seat pan. Uh, it's a razor seat pan. It's the foam from a CRF 50 tall and then the seat cover from a, uh, a 50 tall. So put on a razor pan. That way it fits perfect. No modifying, no bending, no goofy stuff like what you got to do. And this bike is just a stock seat body work uh, with monster graphics, all that good stuff. Um, this bike uh, has a different front front fork set up. Um, they're a little bit taller. I think they're 630 millimeters. Uh, so it's a little bit taller. And then I have a, a little bit of a taller rear shock. I don't remember the size off the top of my head, but 
Uh, this bike is a little bit taller because obviously I'm heavier. It's my bike. It's my son's bike. He's a lot less weight than me, so it's still pretty much stock height.